Morning you four, Ms. Smith here today. I'm going to be doing the writing video and it's going to be our last one in our plan B topic. Because of that, I've decided to do a longer session where you can do it over several days and I'll talk about that within the video. What's the big picture? Over the next few sessions, we're going to be writing a fact file. Now, a fact file gives you key information on a specific subject in an easy to read way. It also helps the reader, or the person trying to find the information out, go to just a couple of sources or one source, our fact file, without having to look at lots of different places to get their information. Our first session is going to plan our writing by looking at a similar text. We're going to look at a waggle, what a good one looks like today. I found this one on wasps. It says, wicked but wonderful wasps. Yellow and black with an irritating loud buzz. The wasp is recognised and disliked by most people. But did you know that they are a very important insect? What do wasps eat? Wasps are omniv omnivorous. This means they eat sweet, sticky nectar and other small defenceless creatures such as spiders, ladybirds, caterpillars and beetles. Where do wasps live? In trees, lofts, sheds and barns, you can find a wasp nest hanging down from a branch or beam. Skillfully, they make their nests out of wood pulp paper. What does a wasp do? Although some people are scared of them, wasps are important pollinators. In addition, wasps eat insects we think of as pests, which keeps their numbers low and less of a problem for people. Are wasps dangerous? Occasionally, wasps can sting people, but the sting only usually hurts for a little while. However, some people are allergic to wasp stings, so it's important that they avoid them. Fascinating fact, wasps live for only 12 to 22 days. What a short life. As we would in class, we're going to have a look at the waggle and we're going to look at the key features and see which ones we can see within the text. So here we've got headings and subheadings, paragraph, fronted adverbials, expanded noun phrases, question mark, exclamation mark, subordinate conjunction, coordinating conjunction, commas for lists, plural possessive apostrophe, that's linked to Miss Bridgewater's lesson from last week, apostrophe of contraction, inverted commas, relative clause and a simile. Some of them are in there, some of them are not. So I'm going to put the video onto the, onto the waggle, onto the text, and I want you to pause and see if you can find any of those within our text. Pause the video now. How did you get on? This is the check part of the lesson. You can see that I've highlighted the headings and subheadings in purple. A lot of the subheadings are questions, so I might use that within my writing. The paragraphs are all separated out underneath the subheadings. That's quite helpful. A good way of being able to remember where to use the paragraphs when we do our fat file. The expanded noun phrases. I found sweet sticky nectar and small defenceless creatures. The question marks are at the end of the subheadings, but there's also one in the introductory paragraph. But did you know that they're a very important insect? The exclamation mark is at the end. What a short life. The subordinate conjunction we've used are although and however. The coordinating conjunctions I can see are and, but and so. Conjunctions are joining words that link parts of a sentence. We've got commas for lists. We've got such as spiders, <sighs> ladybirds, <sighs> caterpillars and beetles. We've also got in trees, <sighs> lofts, <sighs> sheds and barns. The plural possessive apostrophe, Miss Bridgewater taught you about that last week, that we can see in this text, wasps' nests. So the nest belongs to more than one wasp, so it's plural possessive apostrophe. Okay, and the relative clause that I can see are which keeps their numbers low and less of a problem for people, which is the relative pronoun. For the fronted adverbials, I can see a range of them. We've got in trees, lofts, sheds and barns. That's a fronted adverbial of place, it's where it is. I can also see skillfully, that is a fronted adverbial of manner, how it's done. Also see occasionally, that's frequency. Okay, how did you get on? What did you spot? Did you notice that there wasn't a simile or any inverted commas in there? Here is our fronted adverbial map from school. You might want to pause the video and jot down a few if you want to use them in your writing later on, or you can come back to this part in the video. But here are the different types that you can use and some examples. From the text marking, what do you think the steps of success would be for writing our own fact file? Pause the video, 
have a think. I've had a look at the text and this is what I think we should include. We should include a question heading, expanded noun phrase, coordinating conjunctions, fronted adverbials followed by a comma, commas for lists, plural possessive apostrophe and a relative clause. What did you think? Well done on session one guys. Um, that's enough for today. Come back tomorrow and we can carry on. Okay. Right, welcome to the second session. This is when we're going to take our waggle on our text marking and our generating of the steps to success and we're going to put it into a plan. Today's session is going to be about organising our writing using headings and subheadings and we're going to be looking at the plan. Now, I love the topic of bees and I like finding out about the different species of bee. So I think I'm going to do my fact file on one that's not as commonly known. So I think I'm going to look at the leaf cutter bee. Now, I'm going to use a title and I'd like to use some kind of feature to kind of make it catchy. So I think I'm going to use alliteration. So I'm looking at leaf cutter bee. So I need to think of some adjectives beginning with L. So it could be lovely. Mm, not such a good one. Lazy. No, I don't think bees are lazy. Uh, livid. I suppose if you annoyed them, they could be. Mm, local. So they do stay local, but I don't know if I like that. Um, I know they're not lazy, but they're quite lively. I quite like that one. And leaf cutter bees, uh, they tend to be on their own. They're not in a hive. So I think I'm going to have lively, lonesome leaf cutter bees. I like that. I'm going to use that. I've taken the idea of having question subheadings um, for my plan. So I've sorted them out by kind of magpieing the ideas from the text. So I've got what do leaf cutter bees eat? Where do leaf cutter bees live? What do leaf, leaf cutter bees do? Are leaf cutter bees dangerous? But I changed the fascinating facts to did you know so that all of my subheadings have a question mark. This is where I'm going to need your help. I've done some research and I found some facts out about the leaf cutter bees, but they are not grouped together. So when you're looking at a paragraph, you kind of group related sentences together. And I'd like to group these under the subheadings that I've come up with. I'm going to show you the, um, the facts up close, read them out. And then I would like you to pause the video and see if you can kind of link them together under the subheadings that I've come up with. Okay, so we've got the attack when they are threatened. There are 9,000 different bee species in the UK. They don't often harm people. Their favourite flowers are roses, tulips, azaleas and daisies. They eat pollen and nectar. They cut discs out of leaves to build their nests. They live in all parts of the UK. They are important pollinators. Leaf cutter bees will sting. They glue the discs together with saliva. They cut holes in rose leaves. They nest in holes in plants, stems, branches, cliffs or walls. So these are the facts that I've come up with. Just to remind you, my subheadings are what do leaf cutter bees eat? Where do leaf cutter bees live? What do leaf cutter bees do? Are leaf cutter bees dangerous? And a did you know? Okay, so pause the video and see if you can group the sentences together for me under the subheadings. How did you get on? Let's see if we kind of had the same ideas. Okay, so I decided to put under what do leaf cutter bees eat? They eat pollen and nectar and their favourite flowers are roses, tulips, azaleas and daisies. Uh, these are the ones I decided to put in where do leaf cutter bees live? And uh, what do leaf cutter bees do? Cut holes in rose leaves and important pollinators. Are they dangerous? So I talked about the sting, not often harming people and attack, attacking when they are threatened. And then the did you know there are 9,000 different species of bees in the UK. I thought it would be a nice general one at the end. It might mean that people look up different species of bees having looked at our fat file. Now, you may have put them in different places from me. And that's OK because that's author's choice. So you might think that one of the other ones might go in a different heading from me. So you might have put, um, what could we see? The, they cut holes in rose leaves. You might have linked to where do they live because they're using the leaves to build their nests. So you might have a different idea from me and that's fine. Okay. 
Thank you for helping me with my plan for my fat file on leafcutter bees. Now it's going to be your turn, but we can't really both write facts about the leafcutter bees. I'd like you to write one on the bumblebee. I found some facts for you and I'd like you to do the same as me. Look at the plan, think about some question headings. You can mag my mind so you could say what do bumblebees eat? Where do bumblebees live? And so on. Could you then look at these facts and do the same? Can you group them into the subheadings so that they kind of link, they're, they're linked to each other? So we've got, they eat pollen and nectar. They can also be found in attics or under roof beams. Bumblebees will chase nest invaders for long distances. They're important pollinators. They live in small groups of up to 400 bees. Bumblebees can sting more than once. Swelling and irritation can last for days. Bumblebees often nest in the ground. Their favourite flowers are foxgloves, lupins and bluebells. The bumblebee sting is one of the most painful stings. They collect pollen to feed their young. The queen hibernates underground in winter. There are 250 different species of bumblebee. Use those facts and see if you can link them under some subheadings. How did you get on? Okay, I had a go and I've linked them under these subheadings and these are the sentences I've put under each one. You can either use yours or you can use this one. It's up to you. Well done guys, that's enough for today's session. You've now looked at a waggle um, and did some text marking and you've now written your plan ready to write your fact part file. Come back tomorrow and we'll have a go at writing a paragraph or two. Hi, so today's session is going to be about writing our fact files. You can use your plan from yesterday and I'm going to use mine. See how we get on. Today's session is going to be using an increasing range of sentence structure and richer vocabulary within our writing. The aim of the video today is that I'm going to be writing the five paragraphs, but you can pause the video at any point. So you can write your fact file over three days, so you could do two paragraphs a day. So I'm going to not pause this time, but you feel free to pause when you've done a chunk of writing and you need a break. OK, so I've got my lively lonesome leafcutter bees heading and I've got my subheading of what do leafcutter bees eat. I want to do a little bit of an introduction and in the um, wonderful wasps one, it talked about them being omnivorous so that they eat plant material and um, insects as well. Now, leafcutter bees um, are herbivores, um, so I'm going to write about that. So I'm going to write um, leaf cutter bees are herbivores. And I'm going to put my relative clause in, so I'm going to go straight in for a chili three. Um, I'm going to explain it, which, that's my relative pronoun, means they only eat plant material. Make sure I finish with my full stop. Okay, read it back. Leaf cutter bees are herbivores, which means they only eat plant material. Okay, happy with that? Just going to cross my T's better than that. Okay, so now I'm going to be looking at my plan. So in my plan, I'd got that they eat pollen and nectar and their favourite flowers are roses, tulips, azaleas and daisies. Now, I definitely think I can put an expanded noun phrase within that first sentence. So I'm going to have a think about um, what I could put. So how could I describe pollen? I could describe pollen as uh, golden in colour. Uh, it's kind of powdery, isn't it? So I think they eat golden powdery pollen. Start with my capital letter. They eat golden powdery pollen and and then I've got to think of the nectar that's the stuff at the bottom of the flowers um so that's it's quite sweet and sticky so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have that uh sweet sticky 
nectar. Full stop. They eat golden powdery pollen and sweet sticky nectar. Okay, and then it says about their favourite flowers. Now, this is the one where I'm going to be basically using all the, the commas in the list from here. So I don't think I need to expand that much. So make sure I spelt the right there belongs to them. It's got an I in it. That's how I remember it. Their favourite one of our year three, four word lists. So definitely one that we need to spell correctly. Their favourite flowers are roses. Now, I'm going to be doing a list, so I need a comma here. Roses, tulips, I'm still doing a list. Daisies, and then I'm going to be putting my final one in, so I now need to have an and. Azaleas, full stop. If you're not sure about commas in lists, Miss Cole did a video right at the beginning in year three on that, so you could always have a look at her video. Okay, that's my first paragraph written because I have my two facts from my plan in there. So let's look at the steps to success um, that we wrote the other day. So this is the part where you've got the chili challenges down the side, see how many you can get in within your writing. So with my first paragraph, I had my golden powdery pollen and my sweet sticky nectar. So I've got my expanded noun phrases in there. I also had my question heading. Um, I had my commas in my list. And uh, I had my relative clause because I put which because I was explaining about that what herbivore meant. OK, so it might be worth not noting these down for when it's your turn so that when you do your writing, you can kind of tick by the side every time you include something from our steps to success. That way, when you're writing, you'll be able to include all of them. Let's have a look at the next paragraph. This is the plan for my second paragraph. Where do leafcutter bees live? They live in all parts of the UK. They nest in holes in plant stems, branches, cliffs or walls. They cut discs out of leaves to build their nests and they glue the discs together with saliva. I'm going to start with they live in all parts of the UK. I find that quite an interesting fact. Um, so I'm going to have interestingly, which is an adverb. I'm going to put it at the front, making it a fronted adverbial. So interestingly, comma after my fronted adverbial. They live in all parts of the UK for the United Kingdom, full stop. Okay, so I've got my fronted adverbial. Now, one of the other sentences I could make into a fronted adverbial, it says, they nest in holes in plant stems, branches, cliffs or walls. I could actually change that round. So I could say um, in, so I'm going to start with the fronted adverbial of place, in plant stems, comma for my list, branches, comma for my list, cliffs or walls, comma for my fronted adverbial, um, in plant stems, branches, cliffs or walls, you could, oh you lucky duck, find leaf cutter. Ah, now I'm going to say bees nests, so I'm going to need Miss Bridgewater's rules from last week. So leaf cutter bees I'm talking about more than one bee, so plural, not singular. And the nests belong to them. So bees ends in an S, so I need the apostrophe afterwards. So I've got my plural possessive apostrophe in there. I'm quite pleased with that. Okay, now I'm going to have um, another fronted adverbial in there. Uh, I'm going to think about how the bees would cut the leaves out. They're going to use them to build their nests, so they're going to be quite careful about it. So I'm going to have carefully... In my comma after my fronted adverbial, carefully they cut discs out of leaves. And I'm going to be, 
I'm going to put two sentences together here with my coordinating conjunction. I'm going to use and to link the sentences together. Carefully, they cut discs out of leaves and stick them together with saliva. What a gross thought, really, isn't it? OK, so if we look at our um, steps to success again, we can see that we've got fronted adverbials followed by commas. I've got my uh, commas in my lists. I've got my plural possessive apostrophe in here. And I join two sentences together with my coordinating conjunction and. OK, so if you need to go back to the video where um, you've got the steps to success, have a go at writing your two paragraphs now. And if you need to, you can have a break and come back tomorrow to do the next two. OK, so welcome back. We're going to write the next two paragraphs. Um, and I'm just going to have a look at the steps to success again to remind me. So I've got question heading, expanded noun phrase, coordinating conjunctions, fronted adverbials followed by a comma, commas for lists, plural possessive apostrophe and relative clause. I'm going to try and get these in my writing again today. My next paragraph is what do leaf cutter bees do? The two facts that I've got under this subheading are they cut holes in rose leaves and they are important pollinators. I'm going to start with leaf cutter bees are important pollinators, but I'm going to extend the sentence. I'm going to make sure that it's a chilly three by putting in another relative clause. And I'm going to use which again. So I'm going to say leaf cutter bees are important pollinators. And then I've got to put a reason why. So I'm going to say which is good for the growth of our food. Right. I'll start with my capital letter. Leaf cutter bees. Are. Now, important is one of our year three, four word lists. Quite often people put in important, but it's important. I like to tell the children that it's I'm important. So you can see that I M A I I M P O R T A N T. OK, leaf cutter bees are important pollinators. One of our new exciting words. Leaf cutter bees are important pollinators. I need my comma before my relative clause, which is good for the growth of our food. Okay, I'm happy with that relative clause. And then my second fact is that they cut holes in rose leaves. Now, although most people like bees or know the role that bees play, um, I'm sure if you were a gardener and you were looking at uh, your plants and looking after them and maybe they might win prizes, I'm not sure you'd be too happy if a leaf cutter bee cut a hole in your prize rose bush. So I'm going to say they cut holes in rose leaves and then I'm going to choose a coordinating conjunction of so this time because I've used and so gardeners and I'm going to put don't so the apostrophe of contraction for do not Miss Bridgewater mentioned that last week as well so the apostrophe is in place of the missing O don't like them So that's my next paragraph written. So I've got a relative clause and I've got a coordinating conjunction in there. My fourth paragraph is are leaf cutter bees dangerous? And the facts that I've got under that subheading are leaf cutter bees will sting. They don't often harm people and they attack when they are threatened. I'm going to start with leaf cutter bees will sting. Um, now, I'm going to think about frequency here and it doesn't happen a lot. So I'm going to say uh, occasionally. So I'm going to have a fronted adverbial of frequency of occasionally. Occasionally, followed by my, front, uh, followed by my comma. Leaf 
cutter, these will sting. Full stop. My next two sentences I'm going to join together. I'm going to join together with a coordinating conjunction. I've used and, I've used so, so I'm going to use but this time. Um, but I'm going to start with uh, a subordinating conjunction of however. They don't, I've got my apostrophe of contraction, they don't often harm people, but, I'm going to join it with my other sentence, will attack when threatened. Occasionally, leaf cutter bees will sting. However, they don't often harm people, but will attack when threatened. I'm happy with that. I've got my three facts into two sentences there. So from my steps to success, I've got fronted adverbials. I've got um, subordinating conjunction and coordinating conjunctions this time. And I've got my apostrophe of contraction in there as well. OK, you can either stop there for today or you can finish off the fifth paragraph because it's only a small one because we've only got one fact in there. On my plan, my did you know is there are 9,000 different bee species in the UK. For my did you know bit, I was trying to think of um, a fronted adverbial that I could put in that would show that it's a really good fact. So here are the ideas that I've come up with. Perhaps you could magpie one of these when you're doing your writing or maybe you could come up with one of your own. I like incredibly, so I'm going to use that one. Incredibly, so I've got my fronted adverbial, so I now need my comma. So, incredibly, there are 9,000 different, because that's one of our year three, four word list, different B species in the UK, United Kingdom. Full stop. Okay, now I haven't got another fact in here, but looking at my steps to success, because I've been ticking them off as I go along, I don't have an exclamation mark in there, so I need to put that in there. Now I'm going to have a fact linked to that, so I'm going to think about that. Actually, that's quite a lot of bees, so I'm going to say, What a lot of bees. That is exclamation mark. So if I was to have a look at my steps to success, I now know that I've included everything in there. OK, so it's now your turn to have a go at finishing your writing, your fact files. Once you've finished, you need to do what, what I did. You need to go through and check off the steps to success. Did you include everything that we wanted to include right from the beginning? You need to read it out loud. You can read it to make sure it makes sense. Read it to see if you've got all the punctuation in that you should have. You can use your noisy punctuation to help you. And uh, you can check it to make sure that you've got all your spellings, um, make sure they're all correct. So have you got pops, um, paragraph of perfect spelling within there? You've got five paragraphs that you've written, so you should be able to have five lots of pops. You could always get your parents or siblings to check it to see if you've got green. Um, once you've done that, I would really love to see these fact files. Um, if you could send them to the year four email, that would be great. Now, if you've already had a go at writing a fact file, you could always use this lesson and edit what you've got. So could you improve what you've already got? Or you could just have a go at writing one about a different bee because you could learn some new facts. Hope it goes well and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.